Boy, Mr. Matthews, am I exhausted. It's been one busy day, all right, Jeremy. Well, I'm thankful it's closing time. I must have had to say the same thing a hundred times today. I'm sorry, sir, the toys and books in the cafe aren't for sale. And I must have explained a hundred times how the toys and books are what make the Storyteller Cafe special. Sell them, and we become just another coffee shop. Oh, well. I guess people are starting to get desperate about their Christmas shopping. <laughs> I know I am. Now, Jeremy, don't you get caught up in all that hype. <laughs> I know, I know. But like you always say, any time you start thinking Christmas is just about presents, there's only one thing left to do. That's right. Maybe that's what I need to do tonight instead of my shopping. Come back here and read the book. It's a lot more fun than shopping, that's for sure. <laughs> Come on, Jeremy, let's call it a day. <gasps> Shouldn't we finish cleaning up before we go? We can finish in the morning. Come on, let's go. Careful, everyone. Don't move yet. Come on, you lily-livered pack of playthings. They're gone, I tell you. Tex. Shee-haw! <laughs> <laughs> what are you waiting for, Christmas? Actually, Christmas is almost here. Y'all need to have a little... Yeah! We need to y'all. Oh, no! Ah! Tex, hurry! Hide! Yeah! Oh, I hate Joker! <laughs> Ooh, thought I'd lost my car keys for sure that time. Hmm, that's funny. I'm sure the register was closed. I wish I had time to read this, but I gotta get those presents before the stores close. Is coast clear? Whew. That was close. <laughs> Hardy har ha! I guess y'all think that was pretty funny, huh? Okay. Oh, 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 that was priceless. Absolutely priceless. <laughs> What's he gonna do for an encore? Lasso a garbage truck? <laughs> okay, everyone. Let's wind it up. <laughs> I think we've had enough of a laugh at Texas expense. No, no, no. Though it was kind of funny. <laughs> Can we please talk about something else? Sorry, sorry, you're right, Tex. But let's do something else. Okay, everybody, let's have some fun. Come on, everyone, join me at the counter. I'm gonna be sick! Oh, 
ring. Don't fail me now. Go. That was close. Is it over? Yep. And may I say, you were the picture of bravery. Out there waving those flags and all. Oh, oh yeah. I was, wasn't I? Oh, 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 oh. no. No big deal. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We need to decide what we're going to do tonight. Yeah. Yes, Tina, what is it? Rubo, I was just wondering, what did Mr. Matthews mean when he told Jeremy he'd know what to do? You know, if he started thinking Christmas was just about presents and stuff. Hmm, that's a good question. I wonder what he meant. Oh, oh, Mr. Matthews, Matthews meant Jeremy should, should read, read the book. book. Book, you say? He should read a book? The book! Hmm, here's one. Build your own log cabin. Is this the one you mean? <laughs> no, hate the, the book. book. The book! Oh, oh, this one. Two arms to hold me. A romance. Ooh, that might be fun. Oh, yuck, Pete! Hey, how about Hotels of Morocco? I've always wanted to go to Morocco. Oh. It's so hard to decide which book to read. There are so many to choose from. Look out! Sorry, guys. I can't hang on. Somebody turn that thing off. Don't worry, Pete. I can do it. Whew. Thanks, Tina. Look out, Pete! <laughs> and by the way, I think I found the book everyone wanted. Wow, I'm so glad I finished my Christmas shopping. What I could use now is some time to relax. I know. I'll go back to the store and read the book. It'll be quiet there, and I can spend some time thinking about the real meaning of Christmas. Okay, everybody, it's time to get ready for a story from the book. Oh, yeah! Okay, your mission is to be our lookouts at the main entrance. It's imperative that no one see us. You're the front line of defense, fellas. Can you handle the mission? Sir, yes, sir! Computer work team assembled and ready, sir! Good job, Tex. Let's get underway. We've got a great story to tell tonight. All right, looking good. You take care of this while I get the cast ready. Gallop, you feeling okay, buddy? Yep, good as new. Okay, who wants to help me tell tonight's story? And don't worry, there's lots of parts for everyone. Toys. Phase two. Go! Let's get this up here. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Uh, uh, All right. What is this hard work? So what is this hard work? Hey. Well, howdy, Chip. You ready to get to work? Rispa ding. Okay, okay. Oh, come on, come on. Okay, places, everyone. How's it look, fellas? All clear, sir. Okay, is everybody ready? Yeah! Then let the show begin! Okay! Yeah, let's have a go! Hey, what's going on? This is unbelievable. I'm sure glad I came in the back way. Okay, I think we're all ready. Hit it, Spot! Whoa, that's much better. Thanks, Spot. Hit it, Chip! Oh, here we go! It was 2,000 years ago. God had decided the time was right for him to send the world a savior. Uh, wait a minute, Pete. Send the world a what? A savior? What's a savior? Uh, <clears throat> I believe I can answer that one, Missy. Okay, now, Chip, uh, can we run a replay of my fabulous act of heroism? And <laughs> <clears throat> you see, when someone is helpless and in a bad situation that they can't get out of themselves, 
they need to be saved. Which implies, of course, that someone has to do the saving. <laughs> well, in this case, it was none other than me. You may all applaud now. Oh, <laughs> get off the stage, yeah, yo, yo. Now that's great, Tex. Uh, thanks. Hey, I wasn't finished. Now, we get the idea, Tex. I was unable to help myself, and you saved me. And if we multiply the impact of that about a million times, we may actually have a comparison or a good example of what God wants to do for all of us. You see, God's people were really in need of saving. They were all bogged down in sin, unable to help themselves. So God knew he had to save them. And to do that, he sent a oh. savior. Oh, a uh, peep? What sin? What sin? Yeah, yeah what, what sin? sin? Good question, Gallup. Okay, Chip, do your stuff. You see, in the beginning, there was God and his people. Then God's people began to do things that disappointed God. They no longer loved or cared about God. They were consumed by sin and evil. God was saddened that his people were separated from him forever. Many people discovered that sin wasn't as fun as they thought and that they longed to be reunited with the love of God. Their lives were empty. happened to them? How did they get out of the bubble? Uh, I mean, get out of sin. Well, that's when God decided he needed to give people a way to be reunited with him. So he sent them a savior. That savior would give people a chance to choose to be free from sin and evil and to be with God forever. That savior was Jesus. And because Jesus was so important to God's plan for saving us from sin, God took special care in how he caused him to come into the world. He made a very special plan, and he followed it to the letter. God knew exactly what he was doing. Of course, no one else did. Least of all, an unsuspecting young couple named Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph were living a quiet life in a little town in Galilee called Nazareth. Wow! Is that what Nazareth really looked like back then? That's just how it looked. Not that we were really thinking much about how Nazareth looked. <laughs> No way! We were too excited about getting married. Hang on, Joseph. As excited as you are about marrying Mary, God has news for you that is so exciting, you'll hardly be able to believe it. Really? Really. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Who are you? Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. I don't understand. What are you trying to tell me? The angel told Mary that God had chosen her to be the mother of his only son, our Savior. Soon she would be pregnant with the Christ child. But how can I have a baby? <laughs> Joseph and I aren't even married yet. With God, nothing is impossible. Mary had been greatly blessed by God, as God explained to Joseph. While Joseph was sleeping, an angel appeared to him. Your baby's father is God. You are to call him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. The scene was set for the most wonderful event in the history of the world. The birth of our Savior, Jesus. Well, that's enough for tonight. Yeah, oh, no, 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 come on. Like it's yeah. early. Come Tell on, the please. Rest of the story. Oh, come on, please. I'll say we want more. This is what Christmas is really about. Remembering the Christ child. Now, now, now. Are you sure you want more? Yes! Okay, okay, we'll go on. Okay, Chip, are you ready? Okie dokie. Rispa bing! These days, when a baby's born, mothers usually go into hospitals where doctors and nurses help them out. Of course, that isn't the way things worked thousands of years ago in Nazareth. Oh, but I'm not worried. When the time comes, I'm sure I'll have the help of my friends. Uh, I'm afraid not, Mary. As a matter of fact, you're not even going to have a chance to have your baby at home. Why not? This part of the story starts with an order from the man who ruled the land in those days, a guy named Caesar Augustus. <laughs> I decree that everyone in the whole world has to pay me taxes. <laughs> Boy, am I a good writer. Everyone had to pay him taxes? Even toys? Well, probably not toys, but everybody else did. Boy. I bet the post office sold a lot of stamps that week. Post office? Stamps? 
What's he talking about? Remember, Beans, this is all happening 2,000 years ago. There is no postal service for Mary and Joseph. I'm sorry, Mary. We have no choice. We must travel to Bethlehem to pay our taxes. That's not fair. Mary's pregnant. She shouldn't have to travel. What's a little pregnancy compared to my money? So she has to travel hundreds of miles on a donkey to pay me taxes. I'm worth it. Oh, Joseph, I feel so heavy. No kidding. Is Bethlehem far now? I'm afraid so, Mary. You must be brave. Mary and Joseph were both brave. They had to be. Because when they got to Bethlehem, they discovered there was nowhere for them to stay. But that's awful. How come they couldn't get a hotel room? Did Joseph forget his credit card? Didn't they call ahead? No, oh, Beans. They didn't have phones or credit cards back then. Uh, did they pay? No, of course not. But I doubt it would have helped if they did. You see, everyone from the whole region had come to pay their taxes at the same time. And Bethlehem wasn't a big town. There simply wasn't any more room. But you're pregnant. You can't sleep out in the cold. That's what I thought. I'm sorry there's no room at my inn. But I'll tell you what. If you want, you can sleep in my stable. At least you'll have a roof over your head. A stable to stay in. Hey, that's not so bad. If you're a horse. Mary and Joseph were blessed to have the stable to stay in. And they were grateful, too. Because that night, Mary delivered her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. We will call you Jesus, just as God told us to. Whoa, 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 Nellie! She, she wrapped him in what? She laid him where? Whoa, it's a manger. It's a trough that you put hay in. You know, to feed the animals. They put a baby in that? It made for a humble but cozy crib. Besides, Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Oh, swaddling clothes? That just means we wrapped him in layers of cloth to keep him comfortable and warm. Anybody want to see what it's like to be swaddled? <laughs> <laughs> Gallop does. <laughs> oh, I do? Yeah, Gallop! Hey, oh, wait a minute. Oh, hey, hey, be careful on take flash. Oh, is it too late to change my mind? Oh, hey, I can't move. That's the idea, Gallop. <laughs> oh, Gallop's been horn swaddled. Hey, don't worry, Gallop. We'll fix you up. Hey, just hand him down to us, fellas. Oh, oh what are you doing? Oh, oh hey, hey now. Now, with all this activity going on in the manger, it wouldn't be hard to forget about what was happening out in the fields nearby. Unless, of course, that's where you happen to be. Because for the shepherds who were out watching their flocks, that night would be one they would never forget. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem the city of David. The angel told them that they would know this baby because he could be found wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Do they know what those words mean? Yes, we know. <laughs> Yee-haw! <laughs> so do we, right, Gallup? <laughs> <laughs> hey! Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest heaven, heaven, heaven and peace on earth to all. all. And that was how it all began. But it still wasn't over for Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. Achoo. Huh? Uh, Tex, did you sneeze? No, Pete. Tina, was it you? No? Gallup? Uh -oh. Anyone? Uh, guys, is everything okay over there? Sir, yes, sir! All clear, sir! Now stay calm, everybody. I'm sure it's nothing. We're just going to go check it out and get back to our story. No, but what if it is something? Get me out of this thing! Okay, partner, no problem. <laughs> now, the important thing is to not be scared. <laughs> oh, that lily livered horse just startled me, that's all. Never mind that, Tex. I'm gonna need your help with this door. Got you covered, Pete.
Hey, Spot, take a look in here. There's nobody here, but I was sure I heard something. Oh, well, let's get back to the story. Now, where was I? You said it wasn't over for Mary and Joseph and Jesus, but <laughs> how can that be? They've already been through so much. Well, the birth of Jesus was quite an event, Tex. A lot of people were interested. Some because they loved God. Others because they loved evil and feared God, sending a savior for his people. God wanted the world to know what a special thing had happened. So he did something very special. Let's show him, Chip. So he put a star in the sky oh. over the manger that held Jesus. That star caught the attention of some wise men who lived very far away in the east. The star was so bright and so different that they knew it was a sign from God that the Savior had come. So they walked a long way through unfamiliar territory, hoping they could get to see Jesus. By the time they got to Jerusalem, word had gotten out that they were in search of the Savior who was being called the newborn king. This made the current king of Judea nervous. He didn't want any competition. His name was Herod, and he wasn't a very nice guy. He wanted Jesus dead. <gasps> oh, get off the stage! Get off the stage! <laughs> Is this any way to treat a king? The three kings stopped at Herod's palace on the way to see Jesus. They were excited and didn't realize how evil Herod really was. We seek the newborn king of the Jews. We saw his star in the east, and we've come to worship him. Really? A new king, you say? Hmm. I tell you what, when you find him, Come back and tell me where he is. You see, I'd like to go and worship him, too. Of course, Herod didn't want to find Jesus to worship him. He wanted to find Jesus so he could kill him. <gasps> Herod wanted to be the only king. The wise men followed the star until it seemed to stand right over the stable where Jesus lay. They had each brought gifts for the child, gifts that represented the special kind of king that Jesus was to become. I bring you gold. I bring you frankincense. And I bring you mud. What kind of gifts is that for a baby? Good question, Beans. You see, many people believe that the gifts were very symbolic of the life Jesus was going to lead. Okay, Chip, let's start with gold. Gold was the symbol of royalty, and Jesus was born to be the king of the Jews. Frankincense comes from trees and is native to northern India and Arabia. It's a strong incense commonly used in the temple as a symbol of holiness. A great gift for Jesus because he was the son of God. However, frankincense was also a medicine and could only be produced by cutting deeply into the tree's bark. Sadly, it is symbolic of the suffering Jesus would endure for all of us. And this is myrrh. It comes from small thorny trees in Arabia and East Africa. It was used for incense or perfume in those days. Often, it was used when someone died. Many believe that this gift was symbolic of Jesus' sacrifice for us. You see, Jesus had to die so that we could all be delivered from sin. This was God's plan for his son. Now, wait just a minute. Did that hairy guy do that? Yeah! yeah. No, Herod didn't kill Jesus, though he sure tried. But Jesus had many enemies because he said he was the son of God and could do miracles. This made many people afraid, especially religious leaders. Why is Christmas so joyful if Jesus is oh. dead? Uh -huh. The story didn't end there, Tina. Jesus arose from the dead and is alive today. What? Jesus is alive? <laughs> I thought you said this story was thousands of years old. That's right. It is an old story. But Jesus is alive today. Actually, he's the only living God. That's why Christmas is so happy. It's the beginning of the miracle that was and is Jesus' life. It's a celebration of the gift God gave us, a Savior. That's why Christmas is a time of joy. Hit it, Chip. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive.
receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and angels sing, and heaven and angels sing, and heaven and angels sing. <laughs> I love to sing. Thanks for helping us see what Christmas is really all about. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's easy to think it's just about presents and candy and decorations and stuff, but it's not. It's really about a miracle, the birth of Jesus. Well, I'm glad you all like this story so much. And there's so much more to tell. That's the great thing about the book. It's exciting and true. I love the book. <gasps> oh, no. I think we have a problem. Oh, there was somebody here after all. And he must have seen everything. Sorry. Shh. Now calm down, everybody. But hey, what are we going to do? What if he saw us? Okay, everybody. Everything goes back in place. I'll take care of this. Okay, old pal. We've got to get the book over to the storeroom. Do you think you can do it? Soldiers, front and center. Sir, yes, sir! I need you to put a couple of parachutes on the book and ready it for a mission. Sir, yes, sir! Okay, let's go! Come on, Gus. You can do it. Just made it. Okay, fella, it's my turn. Jeremy, are you in here? Jeremy! Wow, that was a really strange dream. Are you in here? You won't believe what happened. I had the strangest dream. It was so real. Come on, son. We need to get to church and celebrate the real reason for Christmas. Yeah, the birth of our Savior, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was close. It sure was. Oh, but it was worth it, boy. That was a great story. The book is full of great stories. Yeah, yeah. And they're all true, too. It's a little sad, though, that we can't go to church and celebrate. But we can celebrate right here. But how? We can all sing Christmas songs. Yay! Yeah! Oh, come Christmas. So that we're here together, cause there's nothing better than Okay, anything. everybody, let's have some fun. Yes, sir! 
Are you sure you want more? Here we go, here we go. Well, I love Christmas. <laughs>